Hi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Life DIY Josie. I am back. I know it seems like an eternity since I have last uploaded and thank you for your patience to those of you who have been following me here in my channel. Thank you for being patient with me and thank you for waiting. So here we go. I've decided that I won't do a Dollar Tree DIY that I usually do. I will be back with that, I promise. But right now, I'd like to share with you some projects that I have done using or reusing packaging materials. Let's get started. Here are a couple of carriers for some drinks. I think these are for cold boba drinks and I didn't want to throw them away. So I figured I can use this to organize our drawer. So here I'm putting some wires for my electronics as well as clips and rings and paper clips and tapes so instead of me buying items even though they're inexpensive i can reuse whatever i have already and here are other ones like the boxes we all have this packaging boxes or shipping boxes from amazon especially now it's getting closer to the holidays again so i have some ideas here that may be able to be of help for you this is a shallow box that has the depth of my drawer for my pots so what i'm gonna do is uh, i'm just gonna cut off the flaps of the boxes and then what I did instead of throwing them away I reinforced the bottom of the box itself and voila I have an organizer an instant organizer for my pots and pans I love using this because like I said it's shallow but it's wide enough for me to be able to organize my pots and pans I don't need to buy expensive organizers or even liners for my, my drawers I will just use this and if it becomes so dirty enough that but I also use them to line the dirty shoes in my mudroom I am reusing them so for example like this one I can reuse anything that has a lot of grease from my pot holder then I can reuse them to hold my shoes so or my boots so here is our mud room and this is where we enter the house so instead of us bringing in the dirt or uh, putting the shoes with mud at the bottom they can stay here here are other ways that i use shipping boxes in organizing my home and bear in mind these are not really aesthetically Pinterest worthy, but if you're keeping them in a cabinet or hidden from view, it's not going to be as unpleasing to the side. The, the important thing here is being practical. So for example, here I put my extra needs for my kitchen and here this shipping box, the USPS shipping box is very good to recycle or upcycle and this is for my blender and hand mixer. So if you have small appliances that you want to put away and also some of the tools that you use for your kitchen, this is a great way to hide it and organize it again hidden from view. This is when labeling the boxes makes sense, especially if the boxes are situated or located at the back or if the boxes are huge and hiding the contents and like the blender and the hand mixer. And here's another one for my packaging ties. So if it's going to be a little bit out of reach or in plain sight, then I would have to label these are scotch tapes and Velcros. So I could put here, it doesn't have to be a pretty label as you can see here. And the one here in the front, I could see the contents and even the bananas, I could see them. I don't need to really label them. And another ones that I label are the ginger and the garlic. And then behind it, I have a bigger box for my tubers like the potatoes and the yams. And these are the ones that do not need to be in the refrigerator because uh, it's best to store them this way in boxes. And I even put some packaging materials there made of paper, recyclable items when I put them away so that they will stay fresh for a while. I have some peanuts here, the yucca, 
again, I label them because the boxes are deep or bigger. Here, the empty bottles as well, I cannot see them right away. And behind those, there are two more boxes of empty containers that I use for organizing. And yeah, so if you want to make them aesthetically pleasing, you can actually make use of decorative paper, even excess wallpaper or gift wrapping paper or scrapbooking paper, whatever you have. Or if you can paint them, you can also paint them, but I keep them like this. It's a practical way of putting or organizing my kitchen items as well as my tubers and other produce that don't need to be in the refrigerator. And here's another one where I use boxes. I just slid the sides and make sure that I keep uh, one of the flaps. I fold the other three flaps and it becomes an instant cover for my recycling bin. Here's another box organizer that I want to use for organizing one of my kitchen drawers. Since we just moved in here, we need a temporary organizer for utensils. This packaging box is shallow. It fits inside the drawer. I'm able to close and open the drawer. I'm just going to remove the dividers first. I'm going to cut this flap here of cardboard and this is what it looks like after I cut. And I did not do the bottom part. I'm placing a couple of layers of paper towel at the inner bottom part. And then I'm gonna put back the dividers in place. Here are forks, spoons, knives that will be put in place inside the organizer. So I'm just gonna put them in each section of the divider. And voila. And since this is not the exact fit, there's still a space behind the box. So I put my can opener there to maximize the space. I am going to be organizing our kitchen junk drawer. I have this small packaging box that I set aside after I opened up the package because I know that I need a container for my small items like this. Tools that I have, the nuts, the bolts, anything that's loose that were Inside the drawer, I'm just putting a place where I can house them. So instead of throwing it away and adding to the landfill, I've decided to just use it. This is small enough so that even if I put this inside this drawer, it will fit. There'll be enough clearance for me to close and open the drawer. So I've been able to put this small trinkets, the small items here, and the drawer looks much neater. And for the extra cables, I'm gonna be using this packaging. What's good about this is I can just seal it like so, and then I'm gonna be placing it in this drawer where I place my battery and that box that I organized earlier, as well as my tools. So that's that. And for this one, I've decided to use this for my notepads and these index cards here. So I'm going to put the index cards. Uh, got some notepads here, the colorful ones that came from the other drawer. There's still some pads here. The pens. All I need to do is just close it. I really love this packaging a lot because they're neat, they're neutral, and also the right height for the depth of the drawer. And here on the smaller one, I've been putting the rubber bands and twist ties for future use. And I can use the holes to just insert what I need to put in without lifting the cover. And speaking of neutral organizers, the iPhone boxes come in white and they're very neutral. And I like using them because they're very sturdy and very good at compartmentalized 
organization inside my drawers. For example, if I have something that I know I might have a hard time finding, I need to find them right away, uh, like remote controls, my power banks, my ear pods, and everything in between. So I use them also, and I like that in this drawer, it makes it more neutral along with the other two boxes that I used earlier. Here's another packaging material that's worth reusing. It's an old case for my daughter's old pair of eyeglasses. She now uses it to organize her eye drops as well as her contact lenses. So this is the view of our drawer here, organized neatly. They do say cute things come in small packages, but in the small package, it can also act as a good organizer, like this one here that used to uh, house our ring camera. So I'll just cut the flaps here the three flaps and I'll show you that I don't necessarily just totally throw away the things that I cut especially the ones at the top and I've shown you that on the other shipping boxes that I assembled like the box from Amazon so I cut this and then I reinforce the bottom with an extra one it may not be needed but it really helps in reinforcing it especially where the folds are and then I will use this to organize my pens as well as my scissors or even my cutters so you can use this I mean you can wrap this with decorative paper, card stocks, or even scrapbooking paper, or excess gift wrapping paper if you want to put this out on display. But this is very durable. You don't need to buy anything. And if it's hidden, like what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put it again inside a cabinet or a cupboard, out of sight, out of view, then I don't really need to cover it. Here's a similar box. The only difference is that there's a divider inside. So I'm gonna be using this to organize my sewing kit. So I'm just gonna be cutting also the flaps, but here I'm just cutting first just the two flaps, the one on each side, the smaller flaps, and then keeping the cover intact. I need the cover so that the things that are inside, even if I carry this one, let's say I put it in another bag or my sewing bag, then I have an organizer inside my sewing bag and things will not fall off this box because it has a lid. I can also opt to probably put a small strip of Velcro on each side or on the lid so that when I close it, it can fasten easier and here's my organizer that came from another packaging item i will be linking it in the upper right hand corner i have a video when i created this about maybe a couple or three years ago and that's where i showed also that yeah you can cover anything if you, if you want to make it look nicer but here the two compartments are really helpful in keeping things corralled so the two small scissors that i have as well as that sewing kit will be on the right side and on the left side will be all my threads and some small rolls of yarns i got this way back when i think they came in a pack of four from dollar tree for a dollar and i can keep them here and then i can just put the cover back in place i just want to show you another iteration of that organizer for the desktop or you know the pencil and scissors organizer by removing the cover or the lid or this bigger flap here i can use this for anything else and it, if it is taller than the box itself for example putting my tall or long scissors here big scissors and then i can even put some pencils again or pens and 
markers, highlighters, as well as even my magnifying glass. The divider in the middle allows for a better organization so that the bigger ones are corralled in their spaces. Here's another packaging material that I really like a lot. If you're familiar with some brands of feminine razors that have cartridges with the blades that has soap, I think this one is Intuition. And this is where the cartridge is originally housed. And I use it for pills or vitamins or even pins and paper clips. And it fits inside the purse. Here's another organization idea using a packaging box that is shallow and also wide. I am just going to be folding the three parts here, one long one and the two short ones on each side, like so. And then I'm keeping the other long side so it will be my lid. It's the perfect style and size to use as a filing box. When organizing my paperwork, I usually use or reuse packaging materials such as this one. This is made of plastic and it has a zip on top so that whatever I can put in wouldn't be dislodged. So this is a packaging material for products that are made of fabric. So they can be blouses, undergarments, or any clothes wear. So I'm showing you here that some of my paperwork, I put them in a plastic zip packaging material like this because I think that you need to protect your paperwork as well before I put it in a filing box. That way if I need to separate them and kind of categorize them it's easier for me to pick and choose rather than uh, putting them just bare without any cover it's easier for me. Sometimes I put a sticky note or a label so that I know which one I'm picking out but sometimes I just look at the content and it's easier again for sorting things out. I put my warranty paperwork, some of my paper bills that I still need the paper statements for. I also use it for those instruction manuals that came with some of the products that we use at home like appliances, like I said, the warranty paperwork, and even some of the empty folders I put here, and then some reading materials like magazines or catalogs, and then I place this underneath my desk, and then I just slide it next to me, and then the good thing is it has a cover and it didn't cost me a dime. Here's another packaging material that I love to reuse or upcycle. It's an empty bottle of creamer. So first, what I'm gonna do is remove this label here. And what I like about this one, it's really easy to remove. I just need to at least use a probably sharp cutter or a scissors, which I'm gonna use here. And then I'll just unravel it. And then what I'm gonna do next is wash it thoroughly. Even though this has been used by the manufacturer and you, you could tell it is really food safe and has gone through some stringent sterilization, because it has been used, I have to also do my due diligence in washing it and making sure that I can still reuse it. So thoroughly clean the inside part of the bottle, either using a, you know, the bottle brush that you use for washing baby bottles or jars. Uh, I have here a silicone type of uh, brush 
and just clean it. Use the detergent or dishwashing liquid. Use warm water or hot water uh, to, to rinse it and rinse it carefully and then dry it. So I am going to be using it to organize or to hold my creamer as well as sugar. So this one is already prepped and I've used this a lot. I'm gonna be putting here a powdered creamer and I'm using this funnel so that I can just scoop up this creamer so that I can load it up neatly. I'm reusing the top and that'll be my dispenser. I'm gonna be using this other one. If you notice, there are different colors. So one is a little darker than the other. The one on the right, I'll be using for the sugar. And I like that the top is white to differentiate the two because I don't wanna always label the things. You can tell the difference between uh, two items like the creamer or the sugar. But to help also, it's good to have those two different types of or shade of lids so the other one was hazelnut uh, flavor so it has a sort of a tan uh, or taupe color of lid while this one has white for the sugar so i'm making sure that i tightly put the lid so that there'll be no accidental spillage. I'll show it to you in a little while how I am going to be putting this on top of our counter for a coffee maker. Here are packaging materials that I love to reuse as well. These are the to-go box containers for when you eat out or the takeout boxes or containers. So I know they're made of plastic, so I just don't want to add to the landfill. That's why I'm trying to reuse anything. And since this looks like it's durable, and again, it's been used to contain food, so it should be food safe. I just thoroughly wash them and I reuse them. I'll show you how I'm gonna be using one of the top or the lids to organize this area where we also prepare our hot drinks. So I have this Dollar Tree container that I purchased years ago uh, back when the prices were just still a dollar at the Dollar Tree and this is where I place my coffee pots. And I will link in the upper right hand corner a lot of my coffee pod DIYs using Dollar Tree materials. So that tray also becomes of space for where I can put my coffee and also my creamer and my sugar. So they are a way to organize without using big bulky trays or even spending a lot of money. I've shown also that other lid, this round one that I use, so that when I am replacing or preparing coffee, I have a spot to put my used coffee pod so that I do not put too much uh, spillage on the counter and and that's also washable. And that's where I put my teaspoon as well to rest it there so that I don't rest it on the countertop and I don't have to use another saucer. I've also reused that same container for the creamer. I've washed it thoroughly as well for dispensing oil. And I like that you can just lift the top, flip it up, and then lock it tight so that the oil will be 
secured in place. And I use it also for soy sauce. There's a smaller version of the same bottle. Sometimes we buy in big, bigger bulk or bigger container and sometimes they don't fit in here. So what I do is I just pour the oil or, or the soy sauce or any sauce for that matter in that same container. Now, uh, you've seen me show the bottom part, which is the black uh, bottom tray. So I'm using it to organize also those condiments on the top right. And that keeps them safe and clean. On the top shelf, you will also see me using the same to-go containers to store my extra condiments, like for example, sachets of seasonings. Another way that I use the top lid is to use it like a paper plate, but it's made of plastic and it's reusable and washable. Since it's made of plastic, I'm just being very careful not to burn it. And even though it is microwave safe, according to the label on top of the plastic lid, I'm still being careful what I put here is not too hot that it would cause any burn or melting. So far so good, like for example, I just toasted these pieces of bread and it didn't melt the lid because it can take a certain degree of temperature. I'm just not sure what it is, but it is, like I said, it's microwavable. It's actually also dishwasher safe. So what I like about this one, unlike when I use a paper plate, I have to toss that paper plate. Sometimes they don't accept that at the recycling center because of the food remnants or oil. But this one, at least I can reuse it. It's, it's a slide as a paper plate. I don't have to buy extra plates or ceramic plates that are heavier. At least this one for my own snacks, I can use this even for fruits, you know? And again, like I'm showing here, I can use it for some hot items also like toasted bread. And since I mentioned already that it's dishwasher safe, it also saves space in my dishwasher if I'm going to use the dishwasher for this and I don't have to wash it right away. I can use several of this, which I have several of this, and then it's easier because it doesn't eat up so much space inside my dishwasher. So I like this a lot. Strictly for personal use only, I don't serve this for my guests. Another way to reuse your food storage, I like reusing especially the bigger ones because I like that they have the depth so because they're food safe pretty much the default items that i use to store in this types of container is are items that need to be in a food safe container right so for example if i want to do food prep and i'm prepping the garnishes or my ingredients as long as i wash it thoroughly disinfect it and I can put my cut vegetables here so that the next time I cook, they're ready to go. It's good for planning your meals, for example. You could cut the ingredients ahead of time and then just put them here so that before you cook them, you can just store them in your refrigerator. Now, another way I use this is for my freezer section. After shopping for my meat, I just wanna be able to store them in my freezer without compromising the other items in my freezer because sometimes I stack items and if they're still fresh, sometimes they may come with blood. Now, I would sometimes pre-rinse or pre-wash them and then put them in this container that I can just lock up, uh, you know, with, with this cover and then just put that in my freezer. But sometimes I do wanna keep them in their packaging, okay? Simply because sometimes I have, you know, certain meats that I don't want to mix up and I have limited room in my refrigerator. So I just use this kind of like a liner storage. So what I do is I put the two, a couple of them, a couple of trays can actually fit because of the depth. Okay, so this is deep enough and then this is high enough to give additional room and space for two if you have like another thin item there it would fit as well now if they're the same type of meat 
I can actually just pre-wash, pre-rinse, or even pre-cut. Like for example, when I told you about prepping meals for my ingredients, I can do the same thing with the cut meat. So here, I can just put this in the freezer this way, and this fit exactly in the freezer and sealed it. And let me show you. So this just fits right into here and it still gives me enough room for other items. So I can put, for example, my, my poultry meat in a different kind of container so that I can put it on top of this container as well if I have additional ones. And then I can put, let's say, the fish meat in another container as well. I'm gonna put my chicken here and so this one here for the ground beef I can also corral it with this and make sure that nothing will drip. Sometimes that happens especially let's say unexpectedly the power goes off. I make sure it's packed tight here it click there you go and then I can put it here see I also use these food containers to organize or store my plastic utensils or flatwares and then I bring them with us in our car so that when all we're on the go and we have to eat we have flatwares and although I don't really like flatwares that are plastics but they're free so why not use them rather than throwing them away I also love to use these food containers to store my baked goodies just like this gluten-free cupcakes yummy they last longer, they have enough clearance even for frosting if I have to have them frosted. Or if I have more cupcakes, I actually can double up and stack them one on top of each other and still have enough room for the cover. To organize my tea bags inside the drawer, I'm also using the smaller size of food containers. These are some of my tea bags. These are not all of them. And at the Hather House, I have more. And here I have quite a bit as well, different flavors. My daughter and I are more of tea drinkers than coffee drinkers. I like the smaller containers because I can use multiple of them inside this drawer and then I can have different flavors in each one because the packets come very small so it can hold a lot for a small container and I can reconfigure them the way I can position them in order for me to organize the drawer better. I also like that it's very shallow and it's perfect for this low depth drawer. Speaking of tea bags, I have empty tea bag tin cans. Actually, this one that I'm going to show you still has about four more pieces, but I have a lot of them. My daughter buys this specific brand and she likes this jasmine tea, but then when it's already empty, I repurpose it for storing my packets of seeds. It's the perfect size and shape for my packets of seeds, like these seeds that I have here. We have a lot of these tin cans. So what I've done is organize them in alphabetical order. Each tin can can hold up to 25 to 30 packets of seeds. It's good to use this kind of storage because in storing seeds you have to make sure that it's in a dry and cool place so I have a few of these tin boxes that I stack up together in our cupboard I'm about to start planting or sowing seeds and getting ready for my fall planting so that by spring I can move them from the greenhouse shelf so I will take this opportunity also to share my new channel that I am about to launch and it's about 
my home and garden projects. So if you are interested, I will be linking it in the description box below and also in the upper right hand corner. Just click on it so you can go to that channel and that's where I am going to be uploading the things or the projects that I am doing outside of this channel that is more specific to kind of like a vlog type where I will do some planting, gardening, home improvements, even home decors. That's where I'm going to be presenting even the projects that I've created here in my life DIY Josie. I want to show you how I really use them around the house. So yeah, with these two tin cans, I was able to store approximately 30 in each and they are a total of 60 seed packets. And for those who are doing a lot of gardening, this would be an inexpensive way to store your seed packets. Here's another food safe container that I like to reuse. This is a gelato container, a jar. It's made of plastic, but it is freezer safe. So I use this to store homemade desserts that I can keep in the freezer section and some of the cut fruits, fresh fruits, and also some veggies, onions. I also use this for also the homemade nectar for my hummingbird feeder. I can keep them every time I prepare and cool them down and keep in the refrigerator. So speaking of to-go containers, these are also some of the favorite ones that I have that I can share with you. This is a plastic container when you buy something that has soup and you know you want to bring home your leftover or sometimes they package your order with this. Let me show you what I've used it for to organize our uh, cut green onions in the refrigerator before I put them in so that I don't have to buy new containers. So I wash the green onions and onion leaves and then I chop them up already and place them in the container. Same thing with the lemons. You know, we wash them thoroughly and then cut them so that, you know, we can organize what we need each day. And, and I like that they're clear. You could see what's inside without rummaging through different assortments of containers. And then I'll just place them in our refrigerator. And I like that you can stack them up one on top of the other. So you can actually put them all together in one spot on the shelf. Uh, you usually use the top shelf. Now for dry goods or items, I have this honey oats and I use the same container because sometimes we buy them and they come in those big boxes. What I do is I also put them here, like this one is chocolate chips. So when we're baking, we know where to find them. And you see one on top that I put a label because there are certain items that look similar or identical so that we don't make any mistakes in choosing the items so I put a label but if I know that the item is very identifiable and easy to identify I don't need a label for example this is my cat's uh, food our cat's food so the dry food and all I need to do is just look at it and say okay this is for the cat that's not for humans and of course uh, the pet foods are on this different section of our pantry or shelf. Still using the same organizer, I'm going to be organizing this cereals uh, so that I can get rid of the cereal box plus it eats up so much space in our cupboard or pantry. So I'm going to be using this container here and then I'm just going to be putting in this cereals and I don't need the label again because I can identify what type of cereals I'm putting in. For example, this one, I could see that there are some dried strawberries, so I could, I could also identify it by looking through this transparent or see-through container what's inside. So again, I don't really need to label it. I like labeling stuff, but if I can identify it, then it's practical for me not to label it. On the next episode, I will be showing you how I use the free packaging materials to organize my pantry. 
So stay tuned for that. Here's another purpose for those to go soup containers. I often replant our cuttings. So for example, this is more like a hydrophonic, I think, style of regrowing vegetable cuttings. So this is a lettuce or we call it bok choy also, or pechai. And I cut that, and that was like two days or three days ago. I used that for my green onions as well. As you could see, I just cut uh, one and then keep them in a rubber band, and then just put some water on below, and then that's where I grow them or regrow them so that we can use them again. Hi. Hi. Like that box? <laughs> Oh, you marked it, huh? Now it's yours. And for the surplus of boxes, especially the durable ones, give them to your cats. They seem to love boxes. Like my cat here, Abernathy, she loves boxes and she actually inspects the boxes first when we have delivery. So uh, she claimed this one already. So I hope you liked this video, everyone. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please share to anyone you would think would benefit from the ideas that I have shared here. Again, thank you for joining me here today. Thank you for all of you who have waited for a while for my next upload. Thank you for checking up on me on the comment sections of all those old videos that you oftentimes visit. And I see some of the notifications. Unfortunately, I couldn't respond to all of them in a timely manner. And thank you for giving me also the time and space to also grieve uh, in the passing of my husband. But now that I'm back, please expect more video uploads and I hope to see you again on my next video. Take care everyone. God bless. Have a great day. Bye-bye.